What's up, my beautiful people? I'm back once again to fill that deep need for some sweet, sweet revenge. So let's get in it, and I'll see you in a bit. They took our parking spots. Hey y'all, I'm currently in public having a mild panic attack, so I'm gonna use this time to write a funny story I've wanted to tell for a while on a sub, and this sub is perfect for it. I don't think it fits in pro revenge, but we kinda went all out on these people over small irritations. So I'm gonna post it here. Alright, story begins a few years back. My mom and I made the most important decisions for the house, which only included us and my brother at the time. And my brother can't even do his schoolwork, so he got dragged along for the ride. At the time, we were deciding where to move, as our current place was expensive and crappy, and I hated the school district. I voiced this to my mom, and we immediately left that district for a lower rent place. And my brother didn't like the district any more than I did, and all was well. For like, the first week, and then our neighbor showed up. Only one really needs a name, so I'll refer to him as Roger. And Roger sucked. Our first interaction with him was him parking in our parking space. Something that would become a frequent occurrence for him and his friends to do. This was a pretty big issue because the only other parking we could realistically use was three blocks away. So this definitely ruined my mom's day when it happened, and watching her mood get ruined by a dick of the neighborhood was never lovely. This added up over time, so I decided to retaliate against them. First, in a small way. At the time, we were still thinking it would stop, so I did something small. I told my friend to park next to our spot, and give our friend a taste of no parking. This didn't end well. Roger parked his car and immediately threatened him with physical violence. My friend told him he wasn't local and that if he let him out, he'd be on his way. After I told my mom about this, she insisted that this was the last straw. Our landlord wasn't doing crap to preserve our parking and our neighbors were threatening us with physical violence. Well, what the hell are we gonna do? I asked my mom. We're gonna run the lease up, she replied, and call some friends. And call some friends we did. Over time. Quickly, just because they incited our wrath by taking our parking spot. We did anything and everything we could to ruin Roger's life. Anytime we saw him, we would just smile and wave. He never knew we were behind any of this. My mom contacted one of her friends, who was a sheriff. He mentioned he knew of drugs getting allegedly passed around in our neighborhood, but didn't know who was doing it. He told her if we got enough evidence, they could stake out his house to grab more. And eventually, that might lead to roping him in. Busting him with a drug dealer? That'd be sweet. We'd finally have our parking back. So we set out to collect any and every piece of evidence we could. Audio of him screaming? Recorded. We'd smell through the walls? time and location written down. People parking in our spots? License plates noted down. I set up a camera to automatically record them coming and going too. We had a thick book of paper trail on when and what this guy did in his house. About 10 months into this, my mom left me out of the loop. Still not sure why, but as I understand it, my logging of the license plates immediately lined up. And we found out, Roger was the asshole dealing drugs. Half of the license plates we had noted down had been arrested and searched, and drugs were found. The cops were confident now. They had their guy, and just needed a bit more evidence on him. This all came to a climax after Elisa's long suffering. We had never used our parking spot, had walked five minutes away just to get in our damn car, and had been threatened by and woken up by our neighbor repeatedly. And then, just four days before we were to move out, it happened. Six law enforcement cars swarmed his perimeter, four of which were police cars, two of which were from Child Protective Services. I saw the door get kicked down, the guy dragged out in cuffs, along with his wife, and three kids removed from the household and driven in the other direction. To this day, nobody except my mom's sheriff friend who was very grateful, knew of her involvement. And according to him, the guy got quite a few years and won't see those kids again. You shouldn't mess with an ant farmer. 
Some important backstory. When I was about 11 or 12, I started getting hobbies which included rock collecting and ant farming. Important later. I also started babysitting my brother at the time. So it was a normal Saturday that consisted of me babysitting my little brother and taking care of my aunts. I was letting my brother play on my PS3 until the doorbell rang. I opened it and saw these annoying little kids that always asked if I could play, but every time I would say no. Normally, they would just leave. But this time, they sat there and kept on ringing the doorbell for about 10 minutes until it stopped. I thought it was over until I heard them start giggling. Then they started throwing rocks at my house. They even cracked one of the windows. I opened the door and they just knew it wasn't going to be good. Also at the time, I was about 5'9", so I was kinda scary. I walked outside and told them to go home or I will call the police. Fast forward about two weeks and it happened three more times. At this point, I was done playing around. I knew they were gonna do it again. So at the side of my house where they were getting the rocks, I had accidentally spilled my fire ant geranium with about 1,500 to 2,000 fire ants on the rocks. So the next day comes around and the little brats were ringing my doorbell. I could almost taste it. Sweet, sweet revenge after the ringing stopped. I heard the thuds of the rock hitting my house. All of a sudden, it stopped and I could hear them start to cry. I looked out the window and the little boy was sitting right on the rocks. They all ran home. Oh, but it's not over. Their mom came out of the house and over to mine. I put on my saddest face and told the mom, they broke my ant farm. After that, the mom gave me $10 and I never saw them again. I almost started feeling bad, but they shouldn't have messed with my rocks. A few weeks later, they started doing things like taking toys from my backyard, ringing our doorbell, and stealing our rocks. I told their parents, but they just kept on doing it even after the fire ants. And this time, I was so mad, I didn't hold back. I took one of my book bags and filled it with Legos, balls, dolls, etc. But that wasn't it. I had one of my subterranean termite farms and emptied it into the bag. I gently put my book bag in the grass and waited. I went to feed my brother lunch, and when I came back, it was gone. Fast forward a couple of months, and their house was on quarantine for the bug infestation. Karma is a witch. I also wasted almost $500 worth of bugs. The Office Pervert and a Cribbage Championship So I posted this in Pro Revenge and it got removed because apparently my old friends are badass. So I thought I'd toss it in here. Hello, happy internet people. This may not be quite pro, but it definitely isn't petty. So here goes. I used to work in an office that did promotions for local charity events and fundraisers. Crap pay, but awesome coworkers, and the blueberry scones in the office cafe were flat out amazing. Our office was small as offices go, about 20 employees, including the two managers. Our top boss, who I will call Bob, was really sweet, constantly having friendly contests with prizes for the most donations and such. I won a basketball that I donated to the kids in my church. He was the kind of guy that would give you $20 from his own pocket if you needed lunch money. I miss him, but I digress. Our office was a lot like the TV show. We were a close family of sorts who celebrated each other's birthdays, drew names at Christmas, and ate lunch together. All was rainbows and flowers until Steve strode into our happy kingdom of blissful sunshine. Steve was tall. Steve was large. Steve had a thing for girls with big boobs. Steve had been fired from the hospital morgue for having relationships with, um, the deceased. Into Steve's line of vision came my friends and myself, the three girls in the office whose attributes appealed to him. Day one, Steve slided over to our end of the office and leered at us. Hey ladies, staring at our chests. We mumbled, shifted, and went back to work. No problem, right? Oh, how wrong you are. This began a daily onslaught of touching, rubbing, Comments, stroking our hair, lewd remarks, and pouting because we didn't reciprocate. We went to Bob. We went to second manager. They threatened him. It continued. 
until the day I was on the phone with the client, and he grabbed my arm in a vice and started whispering in my ear while I was on the phone with the client. I was struggling to stay professional while trying and failing to get away from him. I finally hung up and screamed, LET GO OF ME, while bursting into tears. Now, this was the 90s. Recognition for sexual harassment was still in its infancy. Help for it was almost non-existent. Unless you worked in our office. Second manager came roaring over, hauling Steve off of me and making sure I was okay. Told me to take the rest of the day. The revenge and the surprising outcome. I went home and took the next day as well to settle my nerves. When I returned to work, the office was buzzing. The girls gathered around me asking if I knew what happened after I left. Uh, nope. The guys in our office gathered in the hall and waited for Steve. When he came out for a smoke, they jumped him, pinned him up against the wall, and while I was never privy to what was said, I was let know that they beat him pretty good and put the fear of God in him. Steve didn't return for a few days. When he came back, he was a broken man. Black eye, bruised face. He came up to me and loudly apologized, saying he knew how wrong he was and promised to play nice from now on. The outcome. Steve was a changed man. Turns out, he was actually a pretty decent guy. While eating lunch one day, someone bought the cribbage board and everyone was surprised to learn I didn't know how to play, so Steve offered to teach me. I found I loved the game, and Steve and I quickly became the team to beat, going on to win the office championship. I left there a few years later. When I left, everyone chipped in for gifts and cards, and Steve gave me a hug, and I hugged him back. Alrighty guys, I hope I sated your daily dose of revenge. If you liked it, consider subscribing, and if you really, really liked it, maybe give it a thumbs up and a share. Anyways, I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.